Aloha, I'm Joshua Cooper, and welcome to Cooper Union, what's happening with human rights around our world on Think Tech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, in Moana, Nui Kea. Today, we'll be looking at education for sustainable development, regional centers of expertise of the Americas meet for a mobilization of, to move our minds. United Nations University Regional Centers of Expertise Americas hosts an exchange of ideas and initiatives to build a culture of education for sustainable development beyond campuses to our collective communities and global civil society. Today, we're joined by three leaders who have created United Nations University Regional Centers of Expertise to focus on education for sustainable development. Beginning with you, Meghna, can you share with us why it was important to create a RCE and how it contributes to your community? Yeah, thank you for having me, Joshua. Uh, my name is Meghna Tare, and I am uh, the Chief Sustainability Officer for UT Arlington here in Texas, and also the founder and director of RCE North Texas. So there are 179 RCEs across the world because it's a, a United Nations University initiative. Um, and we have 10 to 11 RCEs uh, in the Americas or in the US and RC North Texas is one of those. Um, I launched RC North Texas in 2019. The idea was just to kind of, you know, build that consensus within the community and work with my stakeholders to address the regional challenges of, you know, North Texas uh, using the UN Sustainable Development uh, Goals as a framework because I think we all are experiencing this uh, population growth where the regions are, you know, growing at a re really rapid rate. And so how do you have sustainable development and sustainable communities in a way that is, you know, truly sustainable for us? And we are a big campus with 60,000 students. So we are a big part of the community. So anything that you do, you know, actually resonates beyond the walls of the campus community. And so the idea with launching the RC in North Texas was to have that collaborative capacity building within the campus community, but with our external stakeholders who range from private sectors to nonprofit organizations, other academic institutions, and even local governments to advance sustainable development goals in the region. Thank you so much, Myra. Can you share your experience with RCE? Sure. My RCE is in Curitiba. Curitiba is in the south of Brazil. And we are in the road since 2007. And we start that because we, uh, Curitiba is known as a sustainable city. So we have a lot of things here that uh, people come to see and um, they want to do the same thing in other parts of the world. Uh, and because of that, we decided to create this RCE to talk about sustainability and engage more people uh, about climate change and sustainable cities and things like that. So, yeah, we, we are um, a, a big group now and um, we, we need to talk more about sustainability and things like that. Thank you so much, Maida. Diego, please share your Thank experience. You for, Thank you for having me, uh, Josh. Uh, well, my name is uh, Diego Adamson. Uh, I am the founder and director of RC Cuenca del Plata. Uh, we've been operational since uh, late 2015. And uh, we're based in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the most southern um, RCEs out there. Um, and uh, it's interesting because um, at that time, it was um, December 2015 when we were acknowledged by UNU. Uh, and uh, what happened then? It was uh, at the same time, you know, the SDGs were only two months old and, uh, and uh, the Paris Agreement was, was uh, actually uh, you know, being born. So it's a very, very special moment. Uh, at that moment, I was also coordinating the um, Climate Change Working Group for United Nations Global Compact in Argentina. Um, I, was, I was a member of the National Steering Committee and uh, back in 2014, we were working on the post-2015 um, agenda with the uh, UN of, um, New York Office of Global Compact. So we were 
already focusing on, on climate change and what we were going to do about it. But we know, I'm a social psychology psychologist in, um, among other things, and um, we know that without education, we will get nowhere. Hmm? Yeah. So that was uh, the moment when I, I found out about the global RCE community and initiative uh, based in, in Tokyo. And I said, this is, this is definitely what we need to do. Uh, so I reached out and, and uh, basically in, you know, presented this, this project uh, that we were going to, to you know, sort of manage from Buenos Aires, but with a regional uh, perspective. So we we focus on the Cuenca del Plata, which is one of the largest river basins in the world. So it covers almost you know up northwards to Curitiba. Um, so south of Brazil, uh, you know, big part of Paraguay, um, even a part of Uruguay, and uh, northeast of Argentina. And we think that RCEs are are crucial as um, Magna was saying, because of the um, possibility of combining a framework, you know, and, and a mindset towards, you know, in terms of sustainability with uh, a regional approach mm, or a territorial approach to, to stakeholders and the challenges, the, the specific uh, area mm, um, uh, has in terms of, you know, what we need to address uh, to, to move forward to a more resilient future. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic um, platform mm, to, to address all these challenges and uh, bring together all these players uh, so we can create a common language mm, and, and focus towards a better future. Thank you so much for sharing all three of you about the impetus and we agree too, we think education is the foundational stone that we can then begin to create that culture that will then ripple across the Americas and around the world. Also agree with you about the regional framework for Hawaii, ours is Hawaii, Moana, Nui, Akea, showing that the ocean of the Pacific actually unites us all and as it allows us then to all communicate from an island perspective, but also pointing out the commonality. Moving into our second phase, maybe we can share a little bit of the importance of the RCE on your campus, in your community, and global civil society, and some of the results that have happened since the creation in each one of our specific circumstances. Regna? Yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah, like you said, I think the the notion behind the RCE is is used to um, you know use education as a tool to guide the conversation. And since we are embedded in an academic institution, it gives us a chance to sort of work with grassroots organizations or other organizations who can benefit from the expertise that an academic institution brings, right? So for, for example, we have students as resources, right? Those who are in graduate school, who are in the PhD program, we have faculty researchers who can actually help drive some of these projects in the community, right? So since we launched in 2019, we have done a couple of projects. There was one which was kind of developing a water quality report card for our you know, river here to kind of show to the community that the river is completely safe for use. And so we kind of using researchers and a PhD student developed a report card that showed the level of uh, you know, salmonella in the water or you know, how safe it is to go paddle um, in the water. We have done a couple of projects to address food insecurity in the region through you know, dialogues, summit, uh, PowerPoint presentations, webinars, inviting speakers speakers who actually are experts in the area of food justice um, to talk about, you know, how can we have a regional approach to this uh, challenge that we are all facing. We have had lots of discussions on climate change. You know, this is a topic that it resonates with the students a lot. And so we have been hosting like simulations for climate models for students to kind of educate them what happens uh, when, you know, you do not have mitigation and adaptation strategies for climate change. So, you know, sometimes um, you start with the basics of introduction to sustainability, or sometimes you go really deep into research projects. Uh, it varies, but it's important because you have to target every audience in your community, and that is how you bring about change. It's true. The inclusivity is absolutely essential as we move forward. Maida. 
Well, uh, here we, we have pro projects from um, formal and informal education. So we have a lot of events and workshops and things like that. We have um, three major uh, guideline SDGs. Uh, that is uh, the four, that is a, a quality education, right? The 11, that is uh, sustainable cities, and 13, that is climate change. So we now, this year we are focusing in these three SDGs. Uh, for example, for uh, education, we have a course for teachers that we uh, discuss about sustainable education, that we talk about how um, important it is to have experience outdoors for students, day learning practice and things like that. Uh, we have uh, another project about mobility in Curitiba. Curitiba is a city that uh, mobility is very important. So here we are discussing about um, bicycles and how we can um, be a better um, city without um, but, uh, without cars and things like that we are we are discussing a lot about this and also about water and the quality of rivers and and so on so um, and I think the SDGs is are very important for um, the RCEs because they guide us and they they show us what is important and how we can work together with other RCs in Americas and in the world, right? We can have projects together in SDG4, for, for example, or another SDG. And so that's why we keep going with the SDGs. It's true. The SDGs are a great common language for all of us to be able to connect with one another and then see how we can then build and then scale up these exciting events. Diego. Well, regarding our experience and, and a comment on the SDGs as a common language, I, I, I usually joke about the SDGs uh, being the new Esperanto for, for sustainability. You know, uh, we can go anywhere and this is uh, such an up great uh, for the past you know uh, last decade for instance we can go anywhere in the world and if we uh, start talking about quality education and and education for sustainable uh, you know, sustainable development one can say oh so you're focusing on on target 4.7 you know it, it's you know it's it's a way of decoding what we mean and how we are seeing the world and where we are you know setting our priorities it's it's wonderful and we certainly need to, you know, um, take advantage of this. Um, it's uh, something we we need to embrace and uh, and, and make the most of. Uh, and uh, regarding our track record and our focus, um, I think one one important um, moment for for us was after you know 2016. Uh, where we started, you know, sort of figuring out what we, what was it that we wanted to do and how we could do it, etc., was focusing um, on the possibility of hosting an RC Americas meeting, and we learned so much and and we got so inspired by Curitiba because uh, their meeting was actually in 2016, so that was my first meeting. And uh, that's where I, I, you know, came face to face um, with with Maida and uh, you know everybody else. And I said, we need to we need to you know empower this. Uh, so because at that moment, and this is something we 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 want to keep uh, doing, we sort of have one annual meeting on either side of the equator. So it was north and south. So 2017 was out of the question because it, it had to move northwards, but uh, there we were uh, saying, hey, you know, next time um, in the South, we are, we are hosting. And that took place in October, 2018. And uh, we went to North 
Argentina, close to the border with Brazil, uh, the province of Misiones, which, uh, which is one of the most um, biodiverse provinces and territories in, in Argentina and, and the region. Mm -hmm. uh, to, it's a small province to our standards. Argentina is a very big country. Uh, but uh, to give an idea, that small province with um, tropical forest has more um, species of birds of the whole of Europe. Mm -hmm. So over um, 550 species of birds. So that's where we decide it was a good uh, location to host this America's meeting. And uh, it, was, it was a challenge and an opportunity because we, give it, we gave it a, a, a sort of a different approach. We designed the meeting where we could um, bring together actors from all sectors. So we had a representative from the, from the governments, from private sector. Mm -hmm. But because we were at, at a very specific location, uh, close to the border with Paraguay, we decided we would uh, invite the, the um, United Nations representatives from Argentina and from Paraguay and government um, representations from both countries. Mm -hmm. So we, as an RCE, we had the power to summon all these uh, actors to discuss sustainability from a regional approach. And that allowed uh, a different level of conversations, mm -hmm. a, a different level of exchange hmm, of experiences, points of view, perspectives. Uh, and, and we believe it made a substantial contribution in, in, in that sense. Hmm? Uh, the possibility of having um, uh, workshops where different um, companies presented their, their work, their sustainability reports, um, learning from, from the local authorities. The, the, the event provided a platform hmm, for the government to uh, show what they were doing. Um, it was a moment where local um, governments from all around the province came to the event and took the stage to sign um, a commitment towards sustainability and the SDGs at that very moment. So um, our, th these what are you know what RCEs can actually do. So that was a big moment uh, for for us and and the region and the Americas um, the Americas network as a whole because there at that very moment we decided we needed to focus on our uh, cooperation and synergy. And this is what we've been working on uh, for the past four years. And actually we made some, some serious progress on this last meeting we had last week. Perfect, and that puts us exactly where we are, where we've been able to share about the birth of RCEs in respective communities, but then also the bold agenda and then you and URC Americas does offer unique projects and programs to promote education for sustainable development to increase the understanding of UN global goals on the ground. And RCE's Americas 11th regional meeting offered that opportunity to organize comprehensive and creative campaigns of knowledge. And what could we say then is some of the impacts of the RC Americas 11th annual meeting that just took place in Salisbury, Maryland? Could you share a little bit, Migna, with, with the highlights for your experience and some next steps we can all imagine going forward? Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway is like everybody has different challenges, right? I mean, there, there's a reason people use uh, UNSDG for regional work because the challenges for every region is different. So it was great to learn from various RCEs who presented about their projects in their community from you know service learning to climate action to sustainable cities, engaging with the youth network. And the biggest takeaway was that you know collective action is something that helps everyone, right? We are coming very close to 2030. Um, 
which is where you know the time frame from the for the UN SDGs and we need action more now than ever and you know um, we sort of had this coordinated approach of how we can structure ourselves better to have that conversation how we actually bring in other RCs or other institutions who might not be aware that this is a model that they can adopt and use to you know educate not just their community but also work with their community so you know the biggest takeaway was how do you how do we um uh, bring about this conversation with other academic institution, perhaps have like a, you know, certification course for other organizations to come learn about, okay, what is an RCE model even, right? We, let's just start with there. And then, you know, different uh, RCEs can offer different kind of expertise. And then Diego and Myra and their team actually built a very solid website for the RCEs Americas. It's in the chat. They put a lot of effort into this. Uh, kudos to you guys. And the idea is we will populate this website with all the projects that everybody does so that it's accessible to everyone, not just something that happens within the closed boundaries of a meeting. <laughs> Exciting. Myra, can you expand on that a bit? Yeah, and I think another challenge is uh, to work together. So we, as Magna said, we have uh, different projects and interests because we act to, uh, we, we have actions uh, in our regions, but also we have interests in common right? because we are we all live in the earth and we need to take care of our planet. So I think one of the challenges is to um, to have projects together and uh, discuss things together, and um, and that's why Diego and I and all the the communications committee are working to. Um, straight the network and try to um, build bridges through RCE so we can um, talk and um, create projects to work together and um, as, a, as a continent for, for the Americas. That's important too. It's true. The comprehensive and creativity is absolutely essential to be able to think of us as one continent and then one island Earth. Diego. Absolutely. Well, uh, one of the, I think, um, um, achievements of this America's meeting that took place in Salisbury last week was, I think, um, it, it allowed us to, to show uh, how much we had worked uh, over uh, um, the course of of those four years since uh, 2018, um, through a pandemic, mind you, um, which was not easy. Um, so the the fact that um, back in 2018 we started putting on the table the these perspective, these possibilities, these you know the potential we had as a network, as a continental network, um, and the fact that. Uh, last week, we could present to, to all members this portal, the rcamericas.org portal, where, as Magna was saying, we could, or we can present RCEs and the network to, to everybody, um, but also it will allow us to show projects, we'll have a library of, of relevant resources, we want to um, offer the platform as a one-stop shop for you know relevant you know documentation etc cetera, etc cetera, that's you know scattered all over the place uh, regarding sustainability uh, there is um, um, a data section that's coming soon where we will provide um, um, visual um, um, uh, information regarding you know, certain characteristics of, of the Americas, but also how our impact contributes to uh, sustainability and the SDGs, um, among other things. Mm -hmm. but, you know, the connection between with social networks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but also it allows us to, um, you know, basically visualize the portal as a as a common platform you know we we, we all rces feel part of it and uh we can have now we now have a window to 
you know, show and share with everybody what, what we can do. And in that sense, we will launch um, uh, another uh, project, uh, a collective project, as, as Myra was saying, the um, Sustainable Americas Network Initiative, the, the possibility of not only working, you know, with each RCE in their territories, but collectively for, um, for the Americas as a whole. And I think it's uh, quite a challenge, but a beautiful opportunity to take everything to the next stage, mm, to the next level. We need impact, as Magna was saying, we're running out of time. Uh, we have the you know, um, midterm stock take in 2025, and then the second part of the decade where we really need to boost our, our commitments and our efforts uh, towards achieving the agenda by the end of the decade and, and, and even forward with the new agenda that we, we don't know the structure of yet, but uh, we know that the coming agenda after 2030 will, uh, will be built upon the, you know, the achievements and the learning curve we, we accomplished during this decade. So, um, that's where we are and that's where we're heading. It's true. When you look at it, we have seven years as we know, so we might face irreversible harm. So the mm -hmm. climate clock is definitely ticking for all of us. Uh, we also know, as you said, there are voluntary national reviews that each country will be reviewed on the 17 global goals. We also know with the Paris Agreement, there's nationally determined contributions and those are also okay. being examined as well. So. There are different ways to see and measure how we're doing, but it's also important for us to look at what education can do as really that creative catalyst though, that gets people to get beyond the challenges or what some people would see as the huge steps that people think might not be possible. Education in a way ignites our imagination to see what we can do and how we can accomplish it together. And that's why the UNURCEs model has been so successful and we thank all three of you for coming and sharing and describing examples from the north and the south but to show how everything is interconnected and we look forward to the 12th annual that will take place in the south i guess and we'll be excited to continue our work not only then but leading up to that with some exciting results so thank you all for joining today mahalo Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.